So the people that I'm around now in GoBundance, what I've learned about those that have the the success that I see at this point in their lives that I would love to have is that they were never result focused. They were process. All right, guys, welcome to Master Life by Design. We are in the Millionaire Series, and I have a special guest for all of you today. His name is Jamie Gruber. I'm excited for him to be on the show. He is part of the Go Abundance group that you've heard a lot of the other interview people talk about. And so he has a different angle. He has a really powerful story that I really am excited to jump into. Um, I haven't heard all of it, but I'm excited to hear as we move forward. But before we jump in, if you like the show, if you want to hear more please like and subscribe on the channel and we appreciate all the support that you have here at master life by design so with that jamie welcome i ah, appreciate it man great to be here heard a lot about you we haven't had a chance to connect so i appreciate this invite oh absolutely well look everyone here we want to know your story so if you could just take some time from maybe like when you got out of high school to where you are today i know that's a lot to pack in in a short amount of time however i know you can make it work so i'll do my best i'll do my best uh you know high school went to college briefly i hated college every second of it and i didn't do much with it i i, I say i majored in registration i went to three different colleges i probably have four semesters done and just never finished it just didn't resonate with me um i i was in the restaurant industry at the time hated that and a friend of mine said hey i'm a claims adjuster with this company company. I think you'd be great at it. And it was like a cube. I didn't smell like fried food anymore. Uh, I didn't have to work the weekend. So I said, absolutely. I'm in. And I got paid more than what I was doing at the restaurant as a manager there. So I joined that company and I was good at it. I, I'm good with interacting with people. It was claims. So, you, you know, there's ne negotiation, there's sort of the influence and all of that. That was, I didn't realize part and parcel of who I am that I was leveraging and learning how to use back then. And I moved up quick. I was in New York. It took me eventually to Boston. Uh, and then eventually I, uh, I, I really went all in after being a, a kind of a middle manager for a number of years um, in Boston and said, hey, you know what? I, I want to be an executive. That's the gig because it's the big pay. It's the bonus. It's the equity. It's everything. That's where I'm going to go. And once I get there, I'll be fully fulfilled. So I got the job. It moved me to Michigan. I got married in Boston to my wife, who actually worked for me at the time. I just kind of claimed her, I guess. So uh, that's how I roll. <laughs> but um, we had our first kid. We moved to Michigan, never having been there before. And uh, while Michigan, actually, we've turned out to really love the job just at that point, everything kind of came together and said, not what you were looking for. In fact, mm. all of the stuff I was doing to get there was just numbing this sort of intuitive voice inside of me that was giving me, as I look back, tons of signals that this was not the path for me. It's not what I wanted to do, but I did it anyway because I thought that was going to be my my uh, my fulfilling uh, position, this executive job. So I got it along the way. Uh, uh, I I actually did start to get interested in real estate, and at the time, I had a New York home that I couldn't sell because I bought it in 05 and I moved in 08 to Boston, and we, we know what happened there. So I was <laughs> renting it out, but hated it. But I'm like, well, all right, if if I'm feeling this draw not to be here, maybe maybe real estate's my thing. So kind of turned that property into an asset mentally as well as financially, bought two more duplexes and we did what they call the burst strategy on those. Uh, and we did okay, nowhere near what we planned. And then got the idea that, hey, you know what, apartment buildings, I think that's the place to go. Like it, it's just easier to buy bigger. You know, you kept, you keep hearing that from people. I wish I went bigger sooner. I don't wish I did, but at the same time, definitely two duplexes closing is a lot of work and no more than closing a 10 or 20 or 30 unit. So I ended up pivoting to that eventually. But along the way, I've got this job that's absolutely killing me. It's crushing my soul. I've got a view for my life that's completely not the job. I wanted to travel three months a year with my family. I wanted to be able to live and do work wherever I wanted to do work. I wanted to do things now as opposed to waiting till I was 60 or 70, which was really the conditioning I started to follow early in my 20s. Get the job, get the girl, get the house, You know, do it all by 27, have kids and just ride it out. But I wanted it now. I wanted it in my, you know, my late 30s, early 40s. Real estate felt like the path. Bought some properties. I enjoyed a lot of things about real estate, mostly the results of it. But I didn't love operations, still don't to this day. The part I did love was the interactive part. These investors are just mindset focused and driven people. And you know they read a lot and podcast. And that was just exciting to me. So I started a networking group because that's natural to my personality. That expanded. It was called Multifamily and More to like 20 chapters nationwide. And I had a lot of fun with that. But again, 
it was great. I was in a brand building space, but it was real estate I was talking about, which I like and love in some aspects, but it's not what I want to talk about all the time. I like growth and mindset and all of that. So that became, hey, you know what? I'm going to build a course, a community called Emerge and Ascend. I partnered with GoBundance on it uh, for future millionaires to learn how to, how, to, how to grow and get unstuck and get over their mindset issues and limiting beliefs. And so I have that to this day, a uh, year and a half ago, given my, my real estate, you know, sort of portfolio and ascension, the stuff I was doing with Emerge and Ascend, I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm out of the corporate gig and I quit. Uh, and from that point forward, we've worked to design the life we've wanted, live where we want to live, do what we want to do. And that's the path we're on right now. Oh, man, I absolutely love that. Um, there's so many things I want to hit on. Let me ask you this. So many people, in the, when they're younger, they just they don't know where to go. So they start climbing the corporate ladder. They pick something and they're like, let's pick the corporate ladder. What was it for you that said, yeah, I want to do that? Like, why did you think to want to climb the corporate ladder? What was the vision there? I would say there was like, so the people that I'm around now in GoBundance, what I've learned about those that have the the success that I see at this point in their lives that I would love to have is that they were never result focused. They were process focused or journey focused, right? I was focused on the result. I just wanted to make a bunch of money. And it was like, well, I can do this. I'm good at it. I, it's, it's good enough for me. And wow, okay, I could see where I can make money. I chased the result. What I wish I would have known back then, and as I, I, I look at people around me is the result comes when you sort of look down right in front of you, you have a vision for your life, but look down in front of you right here and do the things day to day that you feel are the most fulfilling for you. When you do that and you just go about your journey and focus on the journey, suddenly you look up one day and you got all the results and maybe beyond what you ever dreamed you could. But mm -hmm. I was my, my reason for climbing the corporate ladder was I had one objective based on the conditioning of my, of my upbringing, be safe, make money, provide for person A plus the children you make, uh, buy the house, be able to pay the mortgage, pay your bills, grind it out, that, that I could do in that job. And even doing that job and climbing that corporate ladder even doing that was really me ripping away from what my upbringing was, which was more like, no, 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 like do it in this little town and never leave it. Mm. Like, don't travel around and move. Like that was a big departure from my upbringing just to climb to the level that I did, let alone leave the job and do everything I'm doing now. But yeah, it was just, I was results focused, not journey focused. Mm, so good there. Yeah, I've found too that what happens for a lot of people is they climb the corporate ladder, even if they have a vision like you did, someone was tugging at their heart was mm. that they get so caught up in the significance of the position that they're in and where they're going. And it's like there's someone, but if they follow their dreams, they become a no one again, right? And I don't know if you've ever experienced that or you see that with other people, but that title means something to them and it keeps them trapped and locked in when really it doesn't produce the fruit that they truly want. Maybe it gets them by in life, but doesn't give them the vision that they're ultimately after. So first time um, I ever realized real quick on that point, first time I ever realized that that was the case. I remember I was 30. I moved from New York to Boston in 08 again. Um, the business organization I was with in New York was falling apart. Big riff. People were being let go. People that I saw as like infallible, like really amazing at what they do. Now they're out of a job and I'm running to Boston because there was a, we had a big growth spurt there and there was that like the recession didn't exist from the context of my job at that time in Boston. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking behind me as I drive out of the state and you're seeing everything fall apart. And it was like, whoa, okay. Up until this point, I was this young up and coming manager. I identified as that to your point. Yeah. And now it was like, man, I got I to detach. Now, did I fully? No, because I think significance is a human need, kind of a Tony Robbins thing. Yep. And I don't mind the idea that you have pride in your title or what you do or whatever. But to your point, I guess I was fortunate in some ways, not to say other people's demise was my fortune, but to see at 30 uh, that, yeah, okay, look, it's okay to feel significant, but that unhealthy attachment to a title um, is not what you want to you want to go down. The further and further you dig into that, the harder and harder it is to dig out. It's a great point. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've seen it so many times. People get so locked in, and it's just like their handcuff yeah. chained, and then they're like, "Well, why am I going to start back over? It's been 10, 15, almost twenty years. I've been here. Why would I start back over?" But what they're missing is all the infinite possibilities that can come to them. Versus, they know where their income is going to get capped. Right. They know that they're capped at a certain position. So. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, good stuff. So you said something really cool earlier, which was about like you just you had this in your gut, this gut feeling that, you know, real estate might be it. What allowed you to listen to that? 
most people ignore that for you what why why did you listen to it what was what was it for you i think any breakdown produces the breakthrough uh at the time that i went for it if you will all i knew was everything around me didn't feel good it didn't feel right it didn't feel i didn't feel uh whole i felt empty i felt hollow i i was i was like adam sandler and click to some extent, like I'm at the table, the body's there eating the food, but not present, not at all involved. Like my wife said that when we moved to Michigan, because uh, prior to that, the job I had, I traveled a whole bunch. Now I'm moving to Michigan. I took a promotion and didn't have to travel. So she's like, look, we moved here in part. So you'd be around like you're here, but you're not here. Mm -hmm. And that was, for me was the moment of like, I have to do something <clears throat> different. That was my intuition to do something. I'll be honest, real estate wasn't like, wow, I found my passion. I found something that made a lot of sense to me and I could see the potential of it giving me the lifestyle I desired. So I went with it. I, I just ready, fire, aim, right? I just took a shot and that was what the shot was. And honestly, I think what, what stops most people is every year you tick through your 30s into 40, every year it gets more and more complex in your mind to walk away from something like a day job, especially if you're making two, three, four hundred thousand dollars like I was. How am I going to replace that? How am I going to feed my yeah. my wife? Doesn't work. How, how am I going to do all this stuff? The hard part is making the decision because you feel as though you got to get it right. You got to make the decision. It was real estate. I'm in real estate because if you pivot off of that and say you're doing something different or something, you're going to be judged for you being all over the place for you not not being able to say like, dude, I get it. You did real estate, but now you're doing this, doing that. By taking action on what I think was the thing at the time, real estate. It allowed me to see, okay, this is real estate. These are the things I don't like. These are the things I do like. And then let me focus fully on that. And then yeah. from there, it caused me to pivot to the things I loved about that to get to a point where today, I feel like when I wake up and do whatever I do, like it's not work. It's not hustle. It's just living. It's love. I love what I do. So most people get stuck as they get closer and closer to 40 and then cross that threshold with the idea that I have to do it the right way not understanding that by taking action on something version 6.0 of you is going to be very different than version 1.0. And it might take six months, might take a year, might take two years, but you're going to pivot. You're going to do things differently. You're going to learn about what you're doing and then decide ultimately on where you are understanding that again, for me, I'll pivot again at some point. Yeah. Sometimes we get under disillusion, whether it's social conditioning or just the way we're, we believe is that we got to know the next thing and it's got to be the thing. Right. Yeah. And it really it could just be a gateway to what you truly love. Like you were saying, when you're fine tuning, constantly experiencing new opportunities or new uh, aspects of a business or a industry that you might fall in love with. And so it's not always going to be that next thing. I fell into coaching. Coaching is not my number one love like teaching, mentoring, being on stage on panels. I love that. Coaching's number two, right? Yeah. And why I do a limited amount of coaching, it's like I see real estate overtaking coaching for me right now, which is really exciting, but I don't know where that's going to lead, but I'm just following that path to see, okay, what happens? And here I am making, you know, these, this millionaire series with people, cool people like you and who knows where this will go, but at least we're taking that action. We're putting that ourselves out there to explore it. It's like you can't you can't sail to a new port if you constantly hold on to the old one. Right? I like that, man. And you know what I like about what you said too is you're you're in a role you're doing something to make money actively that you do love. It's your second love, whatever. But it's not not fulfilling, right? Like the job I had was not fulfilling. So a lot of people get stuck with like, well, I want to not have a job so I can sit on a beach, which is not realistic. You're going to do something. But when you're doing work that's fulfilling while you expect and or, or while you uh, test other things like real estate that you're doing or, or whatever else it is, when you're doing something you love, you remove desperation from your other ventures because you've got the income, right? The coaching allows you to make income so you can provide for your family so that you're not forcing it in real estate and doing a bad deal because you're depending on that income. Or so yep. you're not forcing this podcast and trying to overdo the monetization plan or whatever because you need to make money on this. You've got money coming in from something that you love, but you're now exploring things that you love even more, that evolution, and you remove desperation from those things by making the money with coaching. At least yeah. that's what I heard. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, going back, actually, putting pieces together here is I've taken what I've been really good at coaching and I've actually kind of combined it with passive income, the love for passive income. And I actually, for the last five years, have a coaching company that actually finds companies that have a product or service as a value add. And we oh, bring nice. in mindset coaching department. I take over that whole entire scenario. 
I bring the coaches, the systems. The only thing the business owner has to do is pay the invoice. That's mm -hmm. it. And their clients and them, they, they get another revenue source. Their clients get extra help. And so that's what I'm focused on a lot in the coaching world as I'm stepping outside of real estate. And that all came because I dove into coaching. I've married that with the passive income that I want from real estate. And I was like, wow, there's an opportunity I see here. And I've been doing that with a company or two for the last couple of the last five years. So nice. it's like, I get to marry that, but not yeah. a lot of people get to do that. So, sure. um, all right. So you followed your gut. Um, I want to talk about right now your lifestyle because you left a job. Actually, no, let's pause on that. Let's talk about your transition because there's sure. a lot of people right now that are in a position, they're working a nine to five. They might even be in GoBundance or maybe not. They're working a nine to five. They have a great income or, you know, they have a lot of money in the bank, but they want to go do something that fulfills them. What was it for you? What was the mindset for you that said, you know what, it's time to make that move. It's time to shift. When you're, when you're 35, 40, 45 years old, you look at your current life and you think of the complexity of it. Maybe you got a couple of kids, you're married again, your wife or husband doesn't work or, uh, you know, your income is, is highly dependent upon your fam family functioning. It's complex. Mm -hmm. And often you might have like a, a 22 year old, or maybe even you think about your own 22 year old self and the things that you thought then were complex, like, well, I have to do this and have to do that. And, oh my God, if only I could go back and tell that 22 year old or you 22 year old right in front of me right now, I want to tell you, you do it now. Trust me by 40 or whatever. It gets so much harder. Right. I, I held that belief in that story. And it is, I mean, there's a difference in, in who I'm responsible for and all of that now versus when I was 22 and at 22, for whatever reason, I felt like I can't just be irresponsible and go do whatever I want to. I have to do X, but I looked the other way and I don't think people do this enough. I'm looking at 90 year old me. Because only I know that guy, right? Only you know your 90-year-old self or, or 80 or whatever year you think it's almost over for you. And what I had was in my mind, like, all right, do I leave this job or not? I got to take care of my family. Oh, it's so complex. If only at 22, I knew this. I, I wouldn't be in this position now. But then I look at 90-year-old me and say, what do you think? And here's what I know. 90-year-old me, is he going to say to me, Jamie, look, um, you should grind it out at something that you don't love and just deal with it, hustle through and be safe and just do that for the next 30 years. That, that's what you should do. Or is he going to say, dude, I, you think your life is complex now, just like you think 22 year old didn't have it hard. I'm about to die. You're in the prime of your earning life. You're healthy and vital. You've got a family that loves you. You've got earning potential. You could do anything. If something flops, get a job. There's plenty of them out there. It's not realistic that you're going to be under a bridge somewhere. Go do what you think is best for you. That's what 90 year old self would say to me. I was so convinced of that. It was not that long a conversation like I just described. It was just like, a, wait a minute, what would he say? Oh, shit. I know what he would say. <laughs> and I was off to the races, man. That was that was for me a major perspective shift, mindset shift on do I do this now or not? Like we get one shot, one ride, one turn. And the idea of tiptoeing and playing this whole thing safe until one day we die, it just it's a, it's an empty feeling for me. Mm -hmm. So that was one major mindset piece. Um, I can get into other things if you want specifically, like tactically, like considerations that I made before I quit, but I don't want to, I don't want to hijack this. No, so that was the big good. mindset. Piece. No, I love that. And so did you quit your job right after that? Pretty much. I, I, I uh, the next thing I would say, if we're getting into tactics, I think that's a great tactic. Ask 90 year old you. The second thing I think you need to do, and I did this unintentionally, and now I do it intentionally, is spend a lot of time in quiet solitude. Not like you don't have to go sit in a dark room for three days. I don't, I don't mean that, but get away <laughs> by yourself. So for me, the unintentional of that was my family was going to Florida for a month, part of a, an accountability thing that my pod had for me in GoBundance. I kept saying I want to do it, and they held me to it. So we're going to Florida for a month. Of course, my wife and kids, cushy, fly down from Michigan to Florida. I drive with the dogs and the toys and all that stuff for two or three days, whatever it took to get down there. And after like the first half day of podcasts and getting on phone calls, like there's only so much of that you can do. Now I'm just sort of forced to be on the road and in my brain. And it's uncomfortable. I can't grab my phone. I can't, I can't distract myself anymore. And in those moments is when like all the clutter in my brain cleared, clears, I guess. 
and I get a lot of clarity. I calm down because every other day it's like, wake up, do your morning routine, go to work, come home, work your side hustle, kiss the kids, get into bed, eat dinner, help the wife clean up, uh, go to bed, right? Just go, 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 go. So that three days of really just being in complete peace was for me, gave me the, the clarity of thinking, what are my expenses? What is my what is my income if I quit? Like, what do I make right now? What's the potential of what I can make? And how much do I believe in that? I can do this. I can make this move. That solitude gave me that. I do that now once a quarter. I call it a solo weekend. Every quarter, my wife and I swap going somewhere by ourselves, not with each other, but by ourselves. Um, and really, I give myself permission to do six things. It's eat, sleep, uh, read, exercise, meditate, and journal. That's it. I don't have to do all six, but I do at least journaling, sleeping, and eating. The rest of it, I don't have to do. Um, so that that for me was was unbelievably clearing to know. Okay, I'm I'm ready to quit my job. So after I talked to my 90 year old self, that was the next thing. And then after that, honestly, it was simply just a matter of of internalizing it and making the decision. But it didn't take long. And after that weekend. Uh, of driving down or those two, three days, like pretty much the day after I woke up in Florida, my mind was made up and I, I, made, I didn't quit right then, but I said, I'm out. And uh, I kind of announced that to people that I knew once I said it to them, it would become real for me. Mm, that's good. That's really good. So important to have a peer group, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, sure. For those that are looking to potentially leave their job and go after what they, they're excited about, whether it's real estate, doing a startup, whatever it is. What would you say strategically, financially, where do you think they should be before they make they, before they make that jump? Six months in the bank and 50% of their expenses covered by something other than their job. I think if you're at a place where, oh, and I guess third is that you've got something to run toward. So if you're in a place where you can cover six months and you've got passive income, a side hustle you've built that's making some money, not replacing your income, but half of your expenses, 50 to 75%, depending on you know, your risk tolerance, if you want to call it that, if you're in that position and you've got something like this business or this real estate portfolio where you can see yourself scaling it and growing it with attention and focus, those to me are the metrics to say, I'm ready to jump. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you, when you want, I don't know if you've ever heard of the vacuum law of prosperity. Have you ever heard of this term? I have, but tell okay. the audience what it is. Sure. I love this phrasing. So vacuum, it's a Bob Proctor thing. He made it famous. And essentially what it says is for you to get the great things in your life, you need to remove something first. Simple example. If you want a new couch, in order for that brand new, beautiful, puffy couch to go in your living room, the couch that's existing there now needs to be moved. You can't put it on top of it. You can't stack it, right? It's got to go. Another great example is the closet. Like if you clear out your closet and you have like four things hanging in it and uh, you get rid of all your old clothes and just the things that you tend to wear, in six months, I bet you, if you go back or nine months, whatever, go back into that closet, it's going to be full again. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to remove all the crap you don't want. And it fills up with the prosperity that you do want the new version of you. It's the same thing with the job. People tell me all the time, like once I get to X cash flow per month, when they're halfway there or 75% of the way there, then I'll quit. But the reality is, and I see this over and over again, and even really it happened for me is when you quit, that path to that number, that monthly cash flow or monthly income number or whatever, you get to way faster than you planned to had you stayed at the job because you are exercising vacuum prosperity. It's an unbelievable, it's not a theory. It is a law. I believe that. So that's my take on it. So good. So good. So many, I can only imagine everyone now like, man, I think I need to quit my job, remove <laughs> that from my plate, but make sure you have the other metrics in place that Jamie was talking about. Absolutely. Um, so very cool. Let's talk about peer group. All right. Because that's a big component. You just said that when you announced that you were quitting your job, you were done, you would get, you told a certain amount of people and it became real. Who is your peer group and why is it important? Or why do you believe it's important to have a peer group like that? Oh man, you have to be around people that are, are, uh, represent the version of you that you are becoming, or that you've decided that you are, even if the external results of your life don't show it right now, I decided I'm an entrepreneur, even though I had my job, I wasn't yet, but I decided I was. So if I'm going to be an entrepreneur, or I am an entrepreneur, at least up here, then I got to get around entrepreneurs. I say this all the time. Like we all have great remember when people in our life right? Our, our parents, our friends, our family, whomever, people that the conversation is like, hey, remember we got drunk, you remember that, whatever, remember <laughs> when they know us for who we've been. But when we announce to them or talk to them about where we're going, it's like, whoa, I, I think on the, on the, on the highest level, they just want to keep us safe. 
But those are the folks, if you're in real estate, for instance, that might say like, I don't know, my uncle went bankrupt by investing in property or my, my cousin got sued. Or do you really want to take those 2 a.m. calls? Like those are the voices that say those things. That's your remember when folks. I needed imagine when people. I needed people that I could say, this is who I'm becoming. They don't know me for who I was. And they're going to not only help me imagine that future, but hold me to it. So GoBundance is that for me. I joined that group, a bunch of entrepreneurial men looking to be the best version of themselves so that I could look up, be very uncomfortable, looking up and saying, I'm going to be like these guys. I'm already there here, but my, my, my one sheet, my results are going to look like theirs one day. And by saying to them, guys, I'm quitting my job. I would not do that lightly. I wouldn't just say that to say it because now I got to show up with a bunch of guys that I respect, look up to and have grown and learned from and say, ah, I was just kidding. I lied. Like the trust between them and me would diminish significantly. So when I said it to them, I knew essentially that I was making it so. And so that's what happened. I, I, uh, I told them and within a month, actually, I, I did that month in Florida, I actually went to a, Go a GoBundance event in Tahoe. And then on March 12th, I announced my resignation, which was uh, 21 days to the day after I started at that company. Ooh, how, did you cool. feel, how did you feel the morning after you, because I remember when I worked a corporate job and I was done and, and I haven't worked one in almost uh, 12 years, I believe. And wow. it's like, what was that Monday morning like when you woke up, you realized I don't have a job. It's now all on me, but how did that feel to know that I don't have to go to a job anymore? It wasn't Monday. It was Sunday. The, the difference in the Sunday countdown feeling, it was gone. Like I never even really recognized it. Like you knew it like Friday's amazing because you're going to be done with work. Saturday's like your book ended. It was yesterday and tomorrow's more no, no work time. But then yeah. Sunday just always felt like, well, all right, I work tomorrow. I guess I got to, you know, just make sure everything's safe. It was just a countdown to like a, this heavy feeling on Sundays. That Sunday when I woke up, I remember thinking like, I don't, wow, I don't have that countdown because I, I can't wait for Monday. I'm actually excited for Monday because, you know, like I'd be doing everything right now, but the people I work with, the people that work with me, they don't do anything till Monday. So I got to wait for them, but I can't wait for Monday. So Sunday was actually the day. And that's honestly probably the number one underrated, unstated difference between job and no job is that non job time not being occupied by something that I didn't really love. So Sunday was that first revelation like, wow, I, that countdown's gone. And to this day, Sundays don't feel heavy to me ever. Oh, I love that. So good. You're now living the six Saturdays and a Sunday, which That's is right. awesome. And so I let's talk about lifestyle. So you quit your job. You started yeah. going in on real estate. Um, mm -hmm. And so share with the audience, like, where did you, what was it about real estate that you focus in on? What did you like about it? What part did you like? And then how has that led to where you are now? And you can share with uh, that transition for everyone. Yeah, 100%. Uh, years ago, I remember talking to a guy that I worked for and then eventually with, I was promoted to his level at an airport um, and saying, yeah, man, one at some point, I'm going to travel three months with my family. And I remember him being like, well, you got kids, school, you've got, you know, your job. How are you going to, how are you going to do that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And I felt kind of dumb, but, but also committed to the idea that this is going to happen. So when I, when I, um, when I, oh God, my God, ask, ask the question one more time. I want to make sure I don't get too far off track. Yeah. yeah. What was it about real estate that got you yeah. excited? And then how has that led to what you're doing now? And then where you are now also. Got it. So real estate for me was the vehicle to get me out. And I remember, you know, thinking all the, like, this is cool. Like I got underwriting tools and doing all this stuff. But like I said, I quickly learned that the underwriting operational asset management side of real estate, I didn't enjoy. But what I do love is the, networking, uh, investor relations, capital raising, that side of real estate. Like I like that. So everything I did from that point forward was really tilted. Like partners uh, I would partner with would do that stuff that I don't like. And I would do the stuff that I do. Like I'd be the face or the, the voice or whatever, while somebody else ran the systems and did all of that stuff. The, the acceleration of that was actually in GoBundance. I met uh, uh, Mark Henteman, who's a 22 year writer for Family Guy. I don't know if you met him or not, but uh, he's got a real estate company, a bit more introverted. He's got one guy with him and they have 150 million in assets under management. I was about to buy a 22 unit and have to go through the whole, our, our third one, have to go through the whole repositioning strategy. When Mark and I met and he said, hey, you're quitting your job. I'd love for you to come be a partner with me and run marketing. I'm like, oh my God, yes. We wholesaled that 22 unit because I didn't want to deal with all the stuff. And my role in real estate has become 
talking about it, marketing it. So mm -hmm. I always say to people like, don't think the thing that you would love to do is so ridiculous that it can't monetize. Because if you were to ask me, I'd be like, if I could do anything in real estate, I would just talk to people about it and make money. That's what I do in real estate. So my role is that I don't have to be in any one space. We invest in multiple cities. We have general partners on the ground in those cities. Uh, and we've closed on eight deals together uh, since I joined uh, Quantum Capital, which has been amazing. That is led along with the other things that I do. Everything I do is designed so that it can be done from anywhere. Lifestyle design. I want to travel three months. My family did a month in South Florida. We loved it so much. We did a month in the Dominican Republic in uh, January of 2022. And while there, my wife being from the Dominican, um, we were able to spend time with family that she has here as well as, um, as, well as uh, uh, at the resort like any other tourist. And at that point, we said, let's just do this for a year. So uh, as we record this about a little less than a month ago, we moved down uh, here, I say, to the Dominican Republic. We're doing this for a year. Maybe we'll do it for two. Um, but yeah, people ask, oh, are you working there? Like, no, why are you doing it? I'm like, because I can. And because that's what the intention was, right? Like, I, I almost feel like a fraud to me if I didn't do this. Like, everything I wanted was the ability to exercise exactly what I'm doing. And so we're doing it. So we're doing this year, maybe two in the DR and we're muddling through it right now, but we'll get there. <laughs> well, the world is your playground. You get to yeah. choose where you go. It's like it's so many people, and again, nothing against nine to fives. I think they're actually very helpful and useful for a season of life. But, you know, um, oh, what, what, there was a saying that I was about to share, and it, it's totally slipping. Oh, my mind. It was about vacation. When you're in a nine to five, you got your vacation time. But when you're free, there's no vacation. You're just living yeah. life in a different location. Right. And I remember talking about that all the time when I was, I started in Amway and I was always talking about, you know, what if I wanted my kids to learn about the Great Wall of China? Well, we're not going to read in a book. We're going to go there for a week and walk that damn thing. So they know exactly how long it is. Right. And yeah. what I love about what you've done is most people think about it, but it's another to actually live it. And that's what you guys are doing. And I absolutely love that. I love seeing your posts, see your kids going to school or playing yeah. in the beautiful pool or at the beach. I mean, what you're living is exactly what Master Life by Design is all about. It's like about consciously creating the life you want. And that's what you've done. And so yeah. I absolutely love it. I'm on the same page as you with that, man. Um, we just the, went to uh, Florida in February for a couple of weeks and we were looking for a second home. And then I was like, oh, wait, my kids got to go to school. So maybe we need to put that on pause. But anyway, so no, no, look, even that, like I get incredible abundance, but we, we learned of non-traditional school uh, sources like Acton Academy, which is what our son was going to down here. We put him in a Montessori. It's the only option for him to be around Spanish, but our older son that is, but actually both of them are in it. But Acton was one of the things too, like, yep, check that lets us be anywhere we want, whenever we want to be there mm. to your point real quick. If I could, I love what you said about um, uh, the good days a year or whatever in your W2. Um, I I've said this, like, I think I traded 40 good days a year as an employee for 40 terrifying days a year as an entrepreneur, but 325 really great days. So 40, 40 good days as an employee, there were 26 paychecks, 10 days a year that I took off that were just for fun, not like a doctor's one, whatever. So that's 36. And then for me, it was the day I got a raise, the day I got a, a bonus, the day I got a stock award and the day that stock award vested, right? Those are my 40 days in a year that were amazing. But the other 325 were just eh, not even miserable. I don't want to say that, but just, <clears throat> eh, you know, it's not fulfilling. Correct. Now I've got 40 days where I can't sleep because like I'm never going to earn another dime. This isn't working. I'm not a good entrepreneur. My brain is just absolutely crushing me and it's scary as hell. But the other 325, when I get out of my own way in that regard, I don't I don't hustle. I do what I love doing on a daily basis. So there is that trade. And that's a great way of putting it that you had a, a moment ago. I had to spike that football. Yeah, that's awesome. Let me ask you, as for those that are free from a job, that everything counts on that. We all know as entre high performing entrepreneurs, when we don't have that security, we have those 40 days where we're just like, ah, is this going to work? And, you know, it's like doom and gloom. What allows you to get out of that? Because I've seen people, they stay there. What do yeah. you do to get out? And what do you recommend to other people to get them out of that funk or that state? Almost every time, there's two things, almost every time that I'm there, one thing has not been happening and then I do this and it fixes it. And that is journaling. Like when mm -hmm. I don't write things down that are up here, they just build this like gigantic, you know, 
cotton ball of crap in my brain. And I, it's like, oh my God, how am I going to, and then it, I can't tell you how many times I'll just write one sentence and it's like, oh, there it is. So that's one. The second, actually, maybe I have three. The second is it's who I surround myself with. So we mentioned GoBundance. I, I have the ability at any point to reach out to, I'm laughing and I'll tell you why in a second, to reach out to the, my accountability pod or whatever it is and say, guys, I'm struggling and get empathy, which I need. I don't want to hear just like the, but also support. Like you got to think about it this way. Here's what we see. Here's this, that, and the other. I mean, even just the other day, my wife pissed me off. And to be able to go to these guys and say, my wife just pissed me off with this. And like, yeah, my wife did that too to me. And they're like, all right, but what's the point? Like, you know, be able to talk ourselves back to, hey, you know, it's normal, but to have that camaraderie is huge. The third is, and I'll be, this is for me, on my worst moment, I'll say to myself, well, I could always go back and get my other job. And before I could say other job or my old job, I should say, <laughs> before I could say the words old job, it's like, okay, never mind. Woo, there we go. I'm out of it. Move it forward, right? Like that is not an option. I, I, I mean, again, it was a good job. I have no disdain for the company. The people there were amazing. It, honestly, I left on great terms with great people, but it, I can't imagine. I, I just can't imagine having to. If I needed to support my family and God forbid, it's fine. <laughs> but when I think, well, let's just go do back and do that. I just, that, that makes me roll forward and, and make sure that I don't, uh, I don't uh, backtrack at all. That's so good. So good. Absolutely. Could you imagine like having to go back, like facing all your peers and like with your tail between your legs? It's like, ah. that's it's the like, biggest fear people have is that it's not that I'm going to fail it's that I'm going to fail and other people will see it. That exact yeah. scenario is the biggest fear. It's my fear. Yep. So, yeah. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I was in San Diego. I'm from New Jersey, originally outside of Philly. And there was, I got back from Iraq and I was supposed to go move back to New Jersey when I was getting out a couple months later and something, I, I believe it was God, but some stopped me and said, you can't move back. Yeah. And I was like, ah. and then I said, I said, I started to agree with it. And this is, and then I'll bring the point home. No, you're good. Everyone asks, why don't you come home? You haven't been home for five years. And my answer, and I still use it to this day as one of the ways that you said that you get out is I go different twists. I say, I never want to look back and say, what if, yeah. what if I move, what if I should have stayed out in California, which actually led to my meet my wife and my career path and where I am today. What if I didn't quit my job and, and go after entrepreneurship full head of steam? What if I didn't get into real estate? What I never want to look back in life and say, what if, because that 90 year old you would say, swing, man, swing away. Go right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We don't always do that. And, and I think that's really important. So I love your I love answer that. there. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. So tell us about the podcast that you're running now. Tell us about GoBundance because a lot of people who are watching don't know what GoBundance is. If they can't qualify for um, the GoBundance Elite, how can they kind of, you know, prepare for it? Yeah. Tribe of Millionaires is the podcast that I run. Uh, I took it over from Pat Hyben. It was called the GoBundance podcast at the time. And uh, I'll explain why I took that over here in a minute. But GoBundance specifically, and again, I hadn't heard of this thing, this this whole concept even of like a mastermind. I tell people all the time, I, first time I heard of it and talked to somebody at GoBundance, I'm like, what, what is this the Illuminati? Like, do you, do you burn <laughs> dead horse carcasses on Wednesdays? Like, what the hell happens in a mastermind? This sounds creepy to me. But as I learned more about it and understood, no, it's just sort of a, a place where people that are like-minded go and they're aligned around a certain, you know, culture and mindset and everything else that are, are aligned, I should say, around it, not that aligned around it, um, and help each other, help each other unlock and, and hold each other accountable. So go, I love the tagline for GoBundance, the tribe of healthy, wealthy, generous uh, men. There's women as well on the women's side uh, who choose to live epic lives. I love that tagline. And really, we... We get together, we talk about, we align all of our structures and our events and everything around these pillars, wealth being one, sure, like passive income, financial freedom. But while doing that, having optimum health, great relationships, being accountable to yourself and others, um, contributing to people and having adventure in your life. So all of those pillars are what spoke to me, that whole life millionaire kind of perspective requires that you have a million net worth to be a part of it. So there's some exclusivity to it. Uh, and for me, it's been... The network, the structure, the things I've learned, all of it has been freeing. I, I wouldn't have quit my job without the opportunities, go abundance, and the network there have provided me, Mark being one of those uh, and, and the other businesses I have being another. At one point, I don't know, six months into my first year, I felt so out of sorts with GoBundance because I felt like I didn't belong. Major mm -hmm. imposter syndrome. 
I met my pod in person for the first time at that point and meeting these guys and being immersed, not being able to click on a zoom and click off a zoom for the first time and realizing like, these are guys, I saw them as so far ahead of me and in financially, some of them are right. But, but we all have our own, our own concerns, issues, challenges, mindset blocks, whatever, you know, relationship struggles, like there's no difference. Our balance sheets might be different, but that's it. That made me realize a couple of things. One is, these pillars are even, it's not like, well, wealth counts most and then relationships and everything else. And we all care about being the best in all of these things. And second, it was like, you know what? I'm just going to add value, contribute to people wherever I can. I'm going to stop worrying about what am I doing here? What am I getting from it? Is it the right thing? I even told my wife at one point, I think I'm not going to renew. And she mm-hmm. gratefully said, uh, did you do everything you should? Like, did you take it full <laughs> advantage? I was like, ah, no. So I stayed in and I went to the founders and said, guys, what are you working on? What's the number one thing right now that you're, you're working on? How can I, how can I help? Like, wow, we want to build like a future millionaires club, people that resonate with the GoBundance brand, but don't qualify yet. Uh, we want like a course at a community. Can you, you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, sure. Never done anything like that, but built a course, built a community around it. And we've been uh, at it for about a year and a half, almost two years um, called Emerge and Ascend, which got me partnership with all of the founders of GoBundance. David Osborne being one of them, uh, you know, if people don't know him, Google them. Um, and that honestly, that, that community, that course, more than real estate, watching people go through it, watching them get value from it and watching them make changes in their life or saying this changed my life was mm-hmm. that fulfillment that I was lacking with my job that made me as a calculus say, I, I got to go pursue that. I said earlier, like if you're 50 or 75% of the way toward covering your expenses and you've got something you can run toward. I saw nothing but potential in building Emerge and Ascend to be something that absolutely helps people get out of the job, get unstuck, lose the weight, whatever it is that they want to do. And I've been running that for the last, uh, uh, like I said, year and a half, and we're about to kind of up, upgrade it, relaunch it uh, at the end of this year, beginning of next. Ah, love it. I actually have a lot of clients that I coach that actually that don't qualify for GoBundance because I'll share with them what GoBundance has done for me. And then sure. they're like, oh, I don't have the million dollar net worth. And so they jump into your program. And the next thing I know, I see them in a uh, GoBundance Elite. And I'm Good. like, oh, great job, man. Great job. That's cool. We've got 34 people do that. Yeah. So it's exciting. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And you said something really important that I is like a key to one of my messages or my beliefs in life is we use wealth as the measuring stick of life, yeah, right? Like yeah. the base, based on your net worth, your income, your passive income determines who you are as a person. And I, I, I get so frustrated with that because there's so many other measuring sticks of life. And if you really, you know, and I know you get this, but for everyone else out there, if you zoom into 90 years old right now, you're not going to look back and say, man, look at all the money I have. You're going to say, who's with me? Who, how many relationships do I have? How many deep relationships? And that's what I love about GoBundance. Like my GoPod, we're tight. We, we, we go deep, right? It's like we share the struggles and the abundance that's happened in our life. But you're going to look at the love, the relationships that you have, the connections and the places you've gone, the experience and memories. I think that's a healthier measurement of life than money. Now, don't get me wrong. We all need money in this Western society, right? But, sure. and, and I, I hope everyone that's watching, if you're not wealthy, if you don't have a million dollar plus net worth or where you are financially, go get rich. Because mm-hmm. I want you to see that once you have all the money, it doesn't mean anything, right? It just makes life easier. You have more options, but it doesn't mean anything. So, um, and I think even Jim Carrey said something like that before. Oh God, yeah, I, I could drink down so much Jim Carrey content. That guy, man, when he speaks, it's unbelievable, especially in these enlightened years of his, he's insane. Um, yeah. But no, I completely agree, man. That was the job for me. Got the job, thought it was what it was gonna do, uh, what was going to fulfill me. And it was a, a, a smack in the face that external validation doesn't exist. Uh, it's like you said, it's what you bring inside of you. So I love that. Cool. So got a couple of questions from people who uh, wanted to ask you questions, just don't get the opportunity to. So the sure. first question is, um, what were you seeking first? Um, some work for money while others work to give back, to create a solution to a problem. What was your driver? What was I seeking first, uh, working for money or working for contribution or, or trying to try? Okay. I, I Okay. I think that's yeah. the question, right? What was the driver for you to get to where you wanted to go? Cause some people go work to solve a problem, contribution, money, right? What was yeah, your, yeah. initially, uh, like the real estate path <clears throat> for me was, um, just to make money. I wanted to make enough money to live my life the way I want to live it. Right. 
But once I, once I got the thing that freed me, the thing that made me say, I'm ready to go was emerge. So it was the contribution. I mean, it's a business of course. So, you know, people pay for that time, which I think is important. They're, they're uh, invested in their own development and participating and showing up. But yeah, for me, everything, and even now, like we go into this recession, um, the people ask like, what's your, what's your, you know, what are you thinking about? How are you planning and prepping and they mean financially, or at least they tell me they mean financially. And I'm doing some things there to make sure that we're safe. But more than anything, it's been a great time for me to reflect and say, I don't think I've given enough here. I don't think I'm contributing enough to people. I don't think I'm being as vulnerable and as open as I could be. Um, so I actually just launched a newsletter that's just like, here it is. It's what I make, how I make it. This was the plan. This is how the plan didn't work. And this is the actuality of it. This is, you know, we talked about vacuum prosperity, some examples of that. I want to I want to deliver to people that are struggling that 35 45 year old guy or gal out there that's making 150 200 grand a year like how do I how do I unlock from this I want to give them the cluttered uh messy crazy not perfect this is how you do it you just fall forward and and things happen and they don't happen there's good days and bad days like don't think that you're going to figure it out and then do it you're, you're gonna have to make a step but it works. You can, you can live in the Dominican Republic. You can do whatever you want to do. Just understand it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be clean. It's going to be messy at times. So when I am doing things for money, money feels heavy. When I'm doing things for contribution, things change in my life. So to answer that question long form, um, I, 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 it's, it's in retrospect when I did it for contribution, not thinking of it this way, like I'm going to do it for contribution. That's going to be my freedom. That's not what I did. But when I did do things for contribution is where freedom happened for me. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. Ne next question. What was a task or ritual that you felt like you did daily, weekly, or monthly that helped move the needle in the direction that took you to where you are to financial freedom? And yeah. on top of that, how did you stay accountable? I think we know, but go for it. That's good. So uh, we teach this in Emerge, actually the first four modules, and I'll, I'll go through the first three and then settle on the fourth, because I think this is what the, answers the question. You got to first have a vision, a very clear vision for where you want to go. And that vision should be future stated as if it's already happened. It's August, 2027. This is what's happened in my life. It should be uh, for you and you only, not for your wife, not for your husband, not for your kids. And it should not have a how in there. Like people want to get logical, like, well, if this is going to happen, then this is how it happened. Like, no, no, no. Don't put blinders on. Don't, don't, don't narrow the universe's options for you because you don't know how it's going to happen. You'll make a plan, but it could happen very differently than how you plan. So have a vision. Second is create a goal, a year-long goal for you that, that, uh, that speaks to you achieving that vision. Your best bet. This is what I think is going to happen in this year. And then take that goal and chunk it down. So what's my goal this quarter to get the year? What's my goal this month to get the quarter, this week to get the month, this day to get the, the, the week and so on, right? Chunk it all the way back down. Gary Keller's uh, goal setting to the now, right? Third, install habits, go atomic habits, stack good habits over bad, change one at a time, whatever those habits are. The key habit to me, though, to answer this question is the fourth step I'll talk about, which is you need to commit to a planning ritual. So every Sunday, most Sundays, and nothing is every, almost every Sunday, I sit down and I look at first the vision that I created. I look at my one sheet. What are the goals I have for this quarter? And then I look at my week and I determine going through kind of a process. All right, what did I accomplish last week? What didn't I? And then move that forward if I need to. I brain dump a whole bunch of stuff. I chunk all that stuff together, I, meaning like things that are like in, 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 uh, in tasks. So if I've got 20 things on there, maybe I've got like four chunks. Oh, these things are kind of like, these things are kind of like, I'll go to my calendar for that week and I'll look at redundancy and there always is. Uh, why do I have a podcast here and a podcast here? It'd be better if they're right back to back. I'm in flow. I can nail those, right? Um, I'll try to eliminate redundancy, cancel things that don't make sense for me, move things around. And then I take those, those chunks. And if they make sense, I'll block them on my calendar so that I execute those things. And then I check in the next week and look back and repeat the process. That weekly ritual of sitting down and scheduling my time and understanding what, uh, what's important to me. What's my vision? I got it. Remember. What's my goal? Got it. Remember, and then establishing a day by day sort of goal and tracking of exactly what I need to accomplish this week. That habit, that weekly sit down, that hour on a Sunday, that by far is the number one thing to keep me on task and to get me to, to the place where I was able to dream about lifestyle freedom and then be sitting here talking to you from the Dominican Republic. Ah, so good. I hope yeah. you guys are taking notes because that was <laughs> phenomenal. You'll have to go back and rewind it to watch this. But, um, yeah. Okay. So before we start wrapping up, tell me what's one book that's changed your life. 
recently, man, I, I'm Alex Hormozzi has been blowing my mind. So hundred million dollar offers. Yeah. Absolutely. Long-term or forever. Uh, there's a book by Napoleon uh, Hill called um, outwitting the devil. Um, one of my favorites, like most people don't know about it. You do obviously, but most, most people don't know about that book. They know think and grow rich. I think outwitting the devil is two X think and grow rich. It's just, yeah, that'll, that'll open your mind. Yeah. If you haven't listened to it, make sure you go on audible and get that book because it is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we wrap up, we know what got you to where you are today. We know you're in a DR with family, but what's the vision from here on forward? What, like, what's that vision? Share with the audience what that is for you. Yeah, my, my vision includes, um, I've come to grips or come to terms or have accepted over the last year, year and a half since I left my job that, hey, look, my gift is to inspire and motivate others to live their best life. It sounds, when I first said it, it sounded cocky. It sounded not humble. It sounded arrogant. But it just is. I'm not. I'm not going to uh, operate on somebody. I don't have that skill. I'm not going to uh, win a win a, a sports contest. I'm five seven, pasty white dude. You know, like there's things I'm not. I'll acknowledge all of that if people need to hear yeah. that from a humility standpoint. But what I am is, I was born with a gift to communicate. I was born with a an empathy and a recognition in others of what I think they need in that moment. I was born with the ability to, to effectively inspire and motivate people. So my vision is I, I, my, I'm growing an affinity-based brand that is built on trust where people will people have the trust in me for, for them to come to me, meaning like watch my stuff, come to my YouTube channel, even you know come to my course, whatever. But they want to come and work with me or see me or listen to me or whatever to help them get to a place where they quit their job, you know, get mm -hmm. fulfillment, uh, uh, get unstuck from wherever they are. So my vision is just a, a, a larger following, a larger voice, the ability to broadcast my message more, speak, do whatever I need to, to just help people truly <clears throat> mean that, help people get unstuck, especially that 40 year old out there right now. That's just like, I'm supposed to be happy. <laughs> I have, I make a lot of money. Like that guy or gal, like I, I feel you to my soul. So if I can help those people by elevating my brand and elevating my voice, that's my vision for my life. I love that. That's amazing. I, I can totally relate and um, I'm similar path to you. So yeah, I, you are. I was going to say that probably sounds very similar for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for yourself. I appreciate you being a light warrior on the path to for others, because we know what it feels like to live this lifestyle and have the freedom and the, the love and the fulfillment. It doesn't mean we don't both of you and me, we, we don't have bad days. We certainly do. We have that shit sandwich we eat. But it's like there's so much more richness to life. And so when you have that, we just, you know, you just want to turn around and give back. And I love the mission you're on. So awesome. Um, tell people, how can, if they want to contact you or get to know more about you and your course and all that channel, what, where can they go? Easiest thing overall, jamiegruber.com. It's got everything on there, but uh, I'm very active on Instagram. I'm active in the DM. So at the Jamie Gruber everywhere. But if you want to settle on one right now, uh, that's the place where I'm most active. Well, I appreciate your time, brother. You did an amazing job. I'm excited for everyone to learn Thank more you. about you and get out there and learn the things that you know and that can help them go to that next level. Guys, if you enjoyed today's show, please give it a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, comment below. What did you take away from Jamie today? We'd love to know that. But with that, Jamie, thank you again. You did. You rocked the house. Really appreciate your time. You are the man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You got it.